Now what I mentioned here, you also see the units are metric. Uh, meters, Celsius, all of these uh, all of these units are going to be used in the calculations. Um, we're not going to mess with these units uh, because that will, will change um, the, the behind the scenes calculations that Red Screen is doing. So once we're done filling this in, we go to this green checkbox that says Paste Data. And again, there's one of these checkbacks boxes that says show data and that will show that climate information down lower on the page. You get all of those numbers that I mentioned. So this is an Excel format. You can take the solar radiation values and use them in, in any way you want. Um, maybe the wind speed is important for you. Uh, Red screen has it recorded here. We're done with the title page, so let's move on to the energy model. The energy model page is the heart of the Red Screen software. This is what makes Red Screen really valuable for evaluating solar hot water projects. And um, this energy model page is where we're going to spend most of our time. When you start the energy model page, you're uh, going to have some, some defaults left in here by Red Screen. You're going to have to change uh, a few of these inputs. And let me zoom in here to give you a, a better view of what we're looking at. Up at the top of the page, we're looking at the technology, solar water heater. And the load is not a swimming pool uh, for the purposes of the site assessment. So we're looking at hot water. Load type, we're going to have to change that from industrial. We have all of these wonderful uh, projects that you could look at um, on the non-residential side. Uh, we're going to be dealing with houses and when we're talking about a house the number of units here is the number of people in the house. Our first example is a two-person example with a 100 percent occupancy rate. Now remember here, when we enter in our daily hot water use, um, the outputs that Red Screen gives us are in gallons per day. We have to change the units for all of our inputs. So Red Screen thinks that uh, we're going to use about 32 gallons per day with two people in the house. And our rule of thumb is 20 gallons per person per day at least for the first two people in the house. And we're going to enter in 40 gallons. That's 2 times 20. We're going to enter in 40 gallons in both the base case and in the proposed case. The base case is this column. The proposed case, you fill in some of the inputs in this column. The base case represents what's existing in the house, and the proposed case represents what the, the, the profile of the house is after the solar has been installed and, and any other projects um, along with the solar. Uh, so if there is a change in the occupancy, um, if there is a change in the backup water heater, for instance, um, in some of these scenarios, people might be looking at doing more than one project with their solar uh, at any one time. So you can look at a combination of, of projects uh, on a limited basis. Generally, we want to compare uh, apples to apples. We want our base case and our proposed case to have similar numbers here so that we're isolating only the solar project. So generally, we're going to treat most of these inputs the same until we start talking about uh, the heat source for the water. Moving on, we've got the temperature, which is an input in Celsius. It needs to be in Fahrenheit. And we are going to use 120 degrees as a default average hot water temperature. More conservative, uh, more resource resource uh, conservationists will put their uh, 
water at a lower temperature than 120. Um, many people will keep their water heater at a higher temperature uh, for various reasons. Um, say a, a dishwasher um, needs uh, hot water at 130, 140 um, perhaps. Um, I think modern dishwashers will uh, work effectively at 120 degrees, uh, but there are cases where uh, people are trying to get um, more hot water storage out of a hot water heater that's too small. Um, other cases where you might have someone with wildly different operating temperatures for their water heater. And I think you want to represent that in the site assessment uh, and evaluate the, the, the person's uh, temperature if it's uh, wildly different from 120 and you know that for a fact. Otherwise, uh, for most people, I would use 120 degrees Fahrenheit and make sure that that's in Fahrenheit because that's going to be really hot, uh, 120 degrees Celsius. <laughs> Operating days per week, seven days in a week, 100% occupancy, we can use seven. Uh, might change that, you know, if it's a non-residential application where uh, they're not using it on the weekends. Uh, this would also help um, if, if, yeah, if, if you had a case that you wanted to represent uh, where there was um, sort of part-time usage. Uh, you can click on this checkbox here next to percent of month used and that will give you more inputs where you can split out um, month by month what is what is the occupancy? Um, what is the usage for each of these? And and that is, um, you know, base case and proposed case. So you'd want these two numbers to match for every single month, so you can compare apples to apples. For this, we're not going to use the percent of month used. I may get into that in the next example. The supply temperature method is the next input, and uh, you can uh, you can tweak this around. Again, um, you're able to edit this, and um, Red Screen has already changed this unit to Fahrenheit. Uh, so they're looking at a, a formula uh, based on the the region that you're in. So for Madison, Wisconsin, their formula is going to spit out this water temperature minimum and this water temperature maximum. Yours are going to be a little bit different if you're in a different area. You can also define these variables yourself. And um, you, you might do this uh, if you had a hot water recirculation, uh, for example, um, or if you had a a very steady uh, incoming water temperature, um, but in general, I think we should stick with the formula method. Now, this is where the base case and proposed case start to diverge. So I'm going to take a break here, and we'll segment the next portion of this video as energy model system. Okay, we left off on our energy model page where we specified the water temperature uh, incoming, the water temperature target, uh, all the information about the load. Now we're going to talk about the system uh, that we're talking about installing. So we're looking at a heating system uh, where the base case and the proposed case both need 9 million BTUs for this load. Energy saved is zero because we haven't specified anything about our system, which is these inputs down here. 